The next session will be on funding for MSMEs. You have these two speakers, one from RTN, or the Regional Technical Node, Pune, and the second session will be by CUB, City Union Bank. So uh, Colonel Ratan Singh will introduce the speaker for RTN, Regional Technical Node. Good ladies and gentlemen, the next presentation will be from the Regional Technology Node, uh, Pune. Uh, which will be uh, undertaken by Brigadier Jayant Rajguru, who is heading this organization. And this organization is an interface between Army, Industry and Academia. The, it facilitates, uh, guides and, uh, the industries and institutions to deal with Army systems for procurement, including design and development of pro products. Uh, they can fund projects for making prototypes, making equipment, ranges available for trials and demonstrations. The organization is based in Pune. Brigadier Jayant Rajguru is presently posted as a Brigadier Capability Development at Headquarters Southern Command and Chairman of Regional Technology Node Pune since January 23 and has spearheaded the cause of Atma Yubar Bharat by his bold initiatives of reaching out to industry and academia for self-reliance of Indian Armed Forces. I will now request Brigadier Rajguru to deliver the lecture. Jayant and a very good afternoon to one and all here. Uh, thank you, Colonel Ratan, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, uh, Swatantra Foundation, for giving the uniform fraternity this opportunity to interact at such a large scale with the industry as well as the academia. I would just like the audience to take your uh, eyes onto the banner out over here in front of you, uh, wherein you find uh, between the two formation signs, uh, the letters written, Southern Star, Army Academia Industry Interface, uh, popularly called as S2A2I2. And uh, this is the uh, initiative started by uh, Southern Command, which is a field army formation, to interact with the brightest mind in the academic circles, with the industry, particularly MSMEs, the innovators, the incubation centers, which have got ideas and innovation, which they want to utilize for the purpose of the defense services and the Indian Army in particular. Can you put on the slides, please? Thank you. Uh, so the <clears throat> motto of the Southern Army, which encapsulates the entire southern peninsula which comprises seven states and about four union territories is either victory or martyrdom on the battlefield. So with that as the credo, you can understand that equipping this fighting force is equally important for it to be lethal and to carry out the task which is assigned to it. As we all know, the Honorable Prime Minister made the clarion call for all of us to put our shoulders together towards a self-reliant, self-sufficient Atmanirbhar Bharat way back in 2014. So as a result of that, the Army Design Bureau was envisioned and it was put into place which took about two to three years for it to finally come on ground. So 2020 was the year when finally the ADB came on ground, which stands for the Army Design Bureau. It was based on the lines of what the Navy and the Air Force already had, wherein there would be a singular organization that would cater to interact with the industry to make sure that its needs are met. As a corollary to this, there also there was a need that was felt that the field fighting formations also should be able to interact with all these people who are putting their hands and shoulders together towards making our country a truly reliant Atmanirbhar Bharat. So therefore, the regional technology nodes were established. As of now, there are only three nodes. One is in the Northern Command, one is in the Southern Command, and one is in the Eastern Command. Now, this node was an additional responsibility given to the erstwhile one of the brigadiers, which uh, now I tenured this appointment of Brigadier Capability Development. 
And with me, I have a team of two more officers. Uh, one is Brigadier Sibbal, who is the director of the Regional Technology Node, Pune, and Colonel Rajguru. In fact, he is my name type, who is there with us, Colonel Prashant Rajguru. So finally, this uh, was put in place uh, as of 2002-21. And as we found that the geographic area was quite vast, there was a need to have sub-nodes in various other formations or spread across the peninsular India. So as a result, eight more sub-nodes were distributed. So along with the nuclear staff of the chairman, director, and the officer in charge, we also have incorporated members from diverse arms, engineering, and support streams of the Indian Army as members. This was primarily to take care of the specialized needs of each and every arm and service that would be existing. So we act as an interface and whenever there are matters which require specialization, then those particular specialized members as on a required basis come on board and facilitate the task of the RTN. So those eight uh, nodes were, again, uh, sub-nodes were established in Jodhpur, Bhopal, Chennai, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad and Ahmedabad which we all understand are the industrial hubs or the corridors of our country which are uh, in the advanced stage while some are still in the developmental stages. Nevertheless, we also took care that there has to be some fighting formation or some formation of the army which is co-located or which, is lo which has been given this task so that that interface could be affected in a positive manner. So the RTN acts as an interface between the industry the academia and the field army. So what do we do? We invite and process various proposals. They might be Suomoto or they might be uh, the need of the field formations as such. We try and match problems with solutions. We uh, devise and uh, uh, bring together project monitoring teams uh, for projects which are undertaken. We provide military equipment for trials, whatever product or project has been, work, been worked upon. Then if there is a requirement of ammunition, ranges, some trials to be done, so we do that kind of hand-holding for the uh, developing agencies. And we benchmark our various processes and at times, you know, uh, milestones are laid so that the projects are kept on uh, track. While at the field army level, we keep on identifying challenges that are existing we facilitate demonstrations so that the industry understands or the academy understands what this equipment is, how it is being utilized. We also uh, encourage generation of ideas and innovations within the uniform fraternity so that even they can come up and they can in turn interact with the industry to make sure that those ideas are well understood by the industry. And we uh, carry out a plethora of interactions and visits uh, wherein uh, there have been times where on days together for entire day or two days we have been visiting an industry right from the shop floor level to their mentors, to their research and designing staff, to seeing their products, to seeing their inventory, to listening to their presentations. So it's actually a very encompassing process wherein the awareness levels get shared both ways, uh, in fact. Uh, with the academia, we, uh, we visit renowned industries like the uh, IIT Mumbai, VIT, AIT, MIT. Uh, there have been inroads into IIT Madras as well, various engineering college. And more specifically, we also try and look at the incubation hubs because they are generally the places where uh, the, uh, generally the uh, people who have passed out who, of their colleges, portals, uh, who've done some industry experience, who worked on some challenging projects, and then now they want to come back, get back connected to the alma mater, and start, you know, mentoring their own college or institutional, uh, you know, uh, people who are passing out with their ideas, with the mentorship of their erstwhile professors, uh, interacting with the industry, interacting with the government for some seed funding, for facilities, for labs, for you know, innovative ideas. So that is the place where we find that the potential is quite large and it can be taken forward. So ultimately our role remains to scout, scan and interface for all ideas and innovations in the country which are there for the armed forces. 
But this does not mean that the technology can purely be only used for the armed forces. T technology will have dual end uses. There are so many projects where the hand holding has been done by the RTN, but the project has not been bought by the army. Fair enough. But the developing agency has found a lot of buyers into the CRPF, PMF circles and even to the extent that they have started exporting outside. So they are quite happy if the Indian Army is not bought it for whatever reasons, they are okay with it. The expertise, the feedback, the mentoring was affected by the Indian Army and the benefit goes to the innovator or the MSMEs or the incubators who have taken part in that particular project. So what do we focus on? We focus on a plethora of uh, fields, diverse fields, namely communication. The security system is uh, not restricted to the physical realm, but the cyber security as well. Uh, observation and surveillance equipment, equipment maintenance, weapon systems, radars, mobility and counter mobility, uh, wherein you uh, go into having equipments which can cross various obstacles and also some equipments which can create obstacles for the enemy so that he is not able to uh, um, get a free run while he is doing whatever misdemeanors. Uh, we also don't lose sight of uh, habitation, uh, habitation issues like you know there are some M MSMEs working on disposal of uniforms, disposal of waste, uh, recycling, regeneration of uh, uh, electricity, uh, of those kinds also, so though they do not directly help us in the fighting, but for the quality of life, for our habitats, they do serve a great purpose and we encourage these kind of uh, parallel streams as well uh, within our ambit. And miscellaneous of course is some technologies which are so motor proposals in case the innovator has developed something and he just comes and walks to up, I have developed this particular uh, uh, product and would you like to uh, you know have a look at it like the other day when uh, there was just a person who just came on uh, an, an impromptu call and said okay, sir I have been an innovator and I have been developing e-scooties. Now e-scooties is a very common thing but he said sir uh, he, would you like me to give you a presentation I said fair enough since you've already come in so let's hear you out. So you know his first slide was where it shown uh, a 350 cc infield bullet which is used in the uh, army as a dispatch rider. So he had shown the photograph of that and he said, sir, I don't know what you use this, but I understand it's a big bike, bullet, it guzzles a lot of petrol and it's kind of uh, very swanky, flamboyant and uh, your muscular men are riding on that. But uh, you see, sir, you know, now look at his analogy. You know, if he has to carry load, then he should, he has put up another photograph of a milkman, you know, having those cans on either sides or, you know, some guy carrying those durries or carpets to sell. And he says, sir, this is the kind of loads people need to carry and I'm sure you must be also carrying. And then he showed one swanky scooty. It was like an ice cream trolley, which you must have seen in your, you know, this thing where, you know, the guy pedals behind and the handle is like this. And then he put up a photograph of an e-scooty, which he had developed. So which was ridden from the rear and in front of it was a kind of a shape thing and he gave us the characters, I still remember, 120 kilometers of range, 80 kilometers of speed and 100 kgs of weight it can carry. So he said, sir, please buy this. Now, I didn't want to laugh, I didn't want to discourage him, but I appreciated his effort of thinking of how he put, he tried to connect his dots in his own way. But then I had to tell him that this is a dispatch rider. This is meant to carry confidential or important orders of highly secretive in nature. That bullet vehicle was given to him because he has to move cross country during day and night. And I do not see where this scooty can figure out where you know it can replace this. But fair enough, he had an idea, he was working. Now take your minds back in case he, when he had this initial idea, if there was some mentor with him and he would have bounced off this idea and if he had worked out this idea, it would have something. But nevertheless, I said, fine, yours is a good scooty. In all the P stations where we carry our dark, which is a routine post, like files, folders from one office to other office, which are, um, you know, geographically spread apart, I can use your scooty. And further on, he had gone to make it a, a kind of a mini fire engine. He said, I can put four fire extinguishers and I can take it as a fire truck. 
then he put some medical first aid box and he said sir i can use it as an ambulance so his imagination was absolutely top class but then where we need to connect is what is required so innovation is there connecting the dots is happening everywhere but i think connecting the right dots is more important so that's why i thought i'll give you a recent example which just happened about last week so finally our initiatives are we are working with the sidm startup forum we conduct these s2 a2 i2 events all across typically say about uh, once in six months most of them are uh, you know um, location based so i'll give out a schedule where we are planning so we decided that we should have a greater outreach and for the same we've um, drawn out a schedule wherein we will be almost going to each and every state because we understand if we have an event in chennai the people for bangalore hyderabad uh, you know some good tier two cities also like uh, nagpur uh, kolhapur also has got industrial hub then you got um, so many other cities which people will not be able to come so we decided let's hold it state wise so that the movement of people uh, and material uh, is restricted and more people will get audience since it happens in a localized may then people will find it a little convenient to attend and that's how we are taking it out uh, we carry out uh, interaction with the industry uh, we carry out lot of trials which i'll just flash in a minute we define problems for the army and then we give it in the language that is understood by the academy and the industry to the environment now typically this problem statements were released by the adb in the aero india show which was recently concluded so there were about 100 plus problem statements have been given very neatly defined what is to be done how it is to be done has been legislated in that and for all those people aspiring to contribute towards nation building can go through those because those are the pain points or the challenges that the army is facing and that is where we would like to focus but apart from that in case anyone still has got an innovative idea he is most welcome to uh, you know discuss that with us Uh, we as of now are undertaking uh, seven research projects uh, incidentally we also have the indigenous research and development fund which is coming to us so for those people who are not able to uh, have a self sustaining model for themselves we are willing to fund that particular project but it has to be in consonance that the army field army should be asking for it and uh, the uh, msme or the innovator should be willing to work on it we will fund for the prototype as such and take care of the finances we facilitate development i'll uh, give uh, some success stories uh, as we move on so uh, we started the uh, events in the month of february we still uh, till date had have had two s2a2 i2 uh, interactions one was in headquarters southern command then suddenly the army institute of technology said sir now let's have it into the uh, uh, premises of an educational institution because it is academia so the army institute of technology volunteered and they conducted one and now incidentally the industry now it said okay sir we will also not uh, you know stay back the third one we will try and conduct it but incidentally in the meantime this event came up and we decided to club our s2a2 i2 of this particular region which is uh, happening from 3rd to 5th uh, we've got uh, the other uh, five of them lined up and as uh, flashed on the slide in hyderabad vizag bengaluru ahmedabad and trivandrum Uh, these are tentative dates and we will still work and formalize on them so just to give a snapshot as of now uh, we've had 170 one on one interactions with the industry uh, from these whatever we could uh, uh, call out whatever potential we could find we've recommended 27 of these products to the adb and various directorates of uh, army headquarters so whatever is good for the field army once having seen that having little done a little bit of test trial evaluations uh, we straight away write to the adb and the uh, directorates that this is one product which we have seen it's effective and efficient and probably in case you need to go for it then these are the contact details this is the vendor these are the specs and all then within my vertical i also have some financial parts where i can buy small amounts or small quantities so i have primarily two funds one is the army commander special financial pass fund and second is the other than capital procurement fund so out of these also in case something is very important very critical like someone has come up with some kind of a boat which can even go in swamps or go into the run of creek area then uh, then straight away six pieces are based on requirement of the formation we uh, put up a, a tender and we buy those things out over there 
So as of now, there are 20 cases being progressed from ACFSP and uh, six cases from the OCPP. Then there are equipments which we find is good, but uh, may, maybe or maybe not. So what we do is, then we promulgate to the environment. When we say we, when we promulgate to the environment, we write to the army headquarters, to all the line directorates. Each arm and service has got a nodal agency at the army headquarters. So we write to them. And we also write to the, all the other commands as well. So they are again our contemporary field formations, uh, the field armies. So we write to them also. So in case some, like someone comes to me with a uh, ECC clothing, that is the clothing which is used in the glaciated terrain. Now in Southern Command, I do not have a terrain. I have mostly desert terrain and the uh, creek area. So I don't have that terrain, but nevertheless, I listen to him patiently, I collect all his inputs, I mentor him and I connect him to the Northern Army where that particular uh, equipment is required. Asking him for a trial or to send him or to send a prototype or to send a sample and then that's the way things are taken forward. So in effect what happens, the RTN or any of the sub nodes of the RTN acts as a nodal point wherever you just go and touch base, it will be connected and sent to the appropriate authority in all earnest. Then. There are about uh, 24 products which we found that they could not be accepted in the form as they were and they required some improvements and some positive feedback needs to be given. So those were the kinds that have been given. Of course, some are uh, not workable, not feasible, not required kind of things, then 30 were dropped. And as of now, 41 projects we are still uh, working on, you know, in the initial stages, the talking stages, the interaction, the meeting stages is what we go on. Some of the trials which we have done is for K9 Vajra upgradation trials which we keep doing for Atmanirbhar Bharat, you know, the uh, Anand Shastra, the QRSAM short range AD missile, MBT Arjun upgrades, the advanced uh, attacks gun systems that we have been uh, doing trials, then Dhanush trials, Pinaka upgrades for regiments, uh, upgrades for its ammunition and the T-72 upgrade with T-90 turrets that is the project Atharva has also been undertaken by us. Now I'll just touch upon uh, two, uh, two, three of the success stories. Okay, there was a, a, a MSME who wanted to do something and they said, sir, I have a concept where he wanted to make a bot for cleaning uh, a barrel. Typically when a barrel is dirty, it takes about 10 to 12 hours of sustained effort by a crew of six to eight people to clean a barrel which has gone soiled or dirty once the firing takes place for it to take undertake the next set of firing. So this guy when he started doing it he bought it in a phenolex pipe. He never had seen a barrel, he had never had seen a gun. So when he showed us this prototype we encouraged, we started mentoring, we started interacting, uh, the whole system you know swung up. Then he was shown a barrel and then there were two, three trials. He improved on the positive feedback that was given to him. And now he's so happy. Initially he did for 130. Now he's done for 105 mm. Now presently he's just finished a trial in with 155 mm. Now he's written another letter saying, hey, sir, please connect me to the tank pen. I want to do the cleaning of the tank gun also. So these are the kind of stories that keep happening. Uh, the, then there is another firm which came to us, they wanted to make, they were the IDEX winners of uh, the course correction fuse. Again, this person wanted to, he had the entire knowledge or the theory of how to make a course correction fuse, but he had never seen a mortar from which this bomb or, uh, is fired. So, you know, the task of getting him to show a mortar, how it looks out, how it feels like, what are the drills on it taking him to the range, showing him live firing, actually made his task much more simple and today he's in the advanced stages and he's, uh, his work has resulted in uh, reducing the central uh, circular error of probability from 100 to 10. So that's a great effort, but it could only happen when we all join hands together and we did not work in silos or we did not work in isolation. So that is the power of collaboration. Then the uh, newly inducted K9 Vajra, they didn't have a recovery tool to, you know, in case something goes wrong with this gun, how do you recover this gun? How do you take it from one place to other place? So that was, uh, you know, made somewhere in Kolhapur is the one of the Gargay Patils, uh, uh, you know, ventured into this. He uh, volunteered and he made that successful project. And then there was another innovator who uh, made an electronic warfare system for us advanced uh, surveillance system is developed which is almost world class. 
So we did hand holding for him and recently we gave him some orders for seven pieces worth crores of rupees. Now he's so motivated, he becomes our brand ambassador and he's asking, sir, what else can I do? These are my specialties. This is how I'm integrating my team. This is how I'm expanding my team. What else does the army require? Let me know and I'm, you know, we'll do. And he's also got connected to other commands as well. So all of a sudden from one small uh, kind of a research agency in the Pune itself, now he's you know, become almost a, an innovator, innovator, a producer you know, and a dealer of some world-class equipments, I must say. The problem definition statements I already touched upon, these are the detailed ones uh, that you need to look in. You need not run around the countryside asking what the army requires. What the army requires is clearly legislated and stated in these problem definition statements. You could just download it from the internet, uh, the Aero India show, the latest one. Along with that, it was released. So you can just have a look, look at your niche capability, look at your potential, what you can touch base, connect to us or any of our nodes in the country, and we will make sure that you are up and about. Uh, of course, it goes without saying that someone would, shouldn't have already taken the pie and taken the uh, lead for that particular thing. Uh, adequate funds are available. Funds is never a, a crunch. Uh, what is... Uh, uh, the things are is that uh, it's uh, the ability to transform ideas into products is what is more important. The motivation and the passion to make the project success is what is more important. And uh, at times uh, people do get frustrated with us sometimes but you must understand uh, we wear the uniform, we are also an arm of the government, we are all legislated by certain rules for financial prudence, transparency. Uh, so there are GEM, there is L1, there is L2, there is TEC, there is a two-bit system, you have to go on GEM. So things that you will have to bear, they are also applicable to us. And there is no way by virtue of wearing a uniform that we can take shortcuts. So that you must understand. In case you have done, the IPRs are then one prototype developed, perfect. In case it's a patent end, then you can go for repeat orders, you can go for scaling. So there are ways and means of doing it and that we need to follow. So right now we are pursuing seven projects. One is a tank zeroing smart target systems by Zen Technologies, then alternator for uh, AC to DC rectifier for the K9 Vajras, which are the latest gun systems, but it's not there. One of the firms in Ahmedabad is developing them for us. We are working on uh, one of the f with one of the firms on um, uh, tether drones, video wing devices for the tank men. Then we have some legacy equipment uh, where the spares. Uh, are not forthcoming, as also the uh, equipment is almost World War II vintage. There are no fresh purchases uh, in the offing. So we decided to upgrade the zoo uh, anti-aircraft uh, gun system. So we are uh, now here we are going stage by stage. We have identified three subsystems to be upgraded. One is the uh, electrical systems, which was not existence. It was totally a manual gun. So you, Second is the servo system and sighting system is what we are uh, working on. So these are the three things which we are working on, the zoo guns. It's almost in the advanced stages of processing. Uh, the work might begin any time probably uh, by, uh, by end of this month or so. Then we've been uh, trying to develop an AI algorithm for target identification with the help of the battlefield surveillance radars as well. And the latest project that we've initiated is the development of an autonomous uh, uh, UGV vehicle, that is unattended vehicle, ground vehicle, uh, unmanned ground vehicle for mine laying as such. So again, probably Bharat Forge is the one which is looking at coming and being a development partner. Uh, for uh, any one of you to contact us, uh, this is uh, the uh, official email ID which you can contact us. Uh, whenever you contact us, uh, please introduce yourselves, give us your contact details. Give us what you do in case you have any product brochures, in case you've got any previous experience, please do mention that. Also mention if the, in case we have met during any of these expos or any industry visits, please do mention so it does help us. Uh, try to uh, consolidate our database so that we are able to manage the number of people very well. And then we are able to connect and take forward things, uh, you know, every time we move up and we don't again go back and ask, start asking who are you and why are we, you know, why are we interacting. So that essence is uh, always kept in mind. Uh, with this, I, uh, it was not a funding talk. It was about what regional technology node is, why it was 
put in place, what are the tasks, what is the mandate, how are we going about carrying out the mandate that has been given to us, uh, what are the success stories, what are the pitfalls, how do we go about, and I'm sure uh, we all go uh, uh, with a heightened degree of awareness as to next time in case we have to deal with the defense uh, manufacturing process, idea, innovation, whatever we want to do, then we generally know how to go about doing rather than you know running around in circles. Uh, with that, uh, once again, uh, I thank uh, the organizers for giving us this opportunity. And uh, I'm open to questions in case they're permitted. Um, I'm okay. If you have any questions, I will answer them. How can MSMEs get benefit out of it? And what are the low-hanging fruits that we can get at the earliest? Right. Since it's a Atm Nirbhar and government is also supporting a lot of initiatives for MSMEs, so how can we get advantage of this? Thank you. Uh, when we talk of low-hanging fruits, uh, then as an MSME, I think uh, the best thing what I find is that you go, can go in for subsystems instead of going for an entire system. You know your potential, you know your USP. Once that is known, like for example, you are an expert in meshed radios. So then you get into the communication. Instead of designing the entire engineering set, you say from the meshed uh, communication systems, I can design this for you and I can show a prototype, I can demonstrate this technology or I can at least theoretically convince you. You can come sit with us. You know, first I told you that go to the problem definition statements. Next, whenever you find an opportunity, please visit the field formations or any unit near you. You might go near a gun, you might go near a vehicle, you might go near an equipment. And then you might just say, Ki, hey, well, how are you doing this thing? Okay, you are doing it this way. I have a better way of doing it. Can I change the small antenna set? Why are you having these kind of taped antennas? I can give you this kind of an antenna. So that is where the small things, you can start with small things. But for that, I think what you require is an interaction with the armed forces and the field armies, for which we are there. I told you that so many uh, sub-nodes are there. Approach any of them and whatever is your desire, it's, it's communications, it's weapon systems, it's radar systems, uh, it's uh, say energy weapon systems you want to develop, it's ammunition, so you have some ideas, you have ideas on some core uh, fuse correction simulations you have, you have some AI algorithms for surveillance, deciphering the clutter from the surveillance, so whatever it is there, just walk up and see. What is the worst that is going to happen? He says, boss, I don't think you, we will be able to come at a common point. That's it. At least you've got a solution. You're not hanging out there. You got a solution, you move ahead or you try another way of doing it. So that is the best way you can do it. And in fact, in case when you uh, interact with the units also, you'll get to know small, small things, how they are doing, you know, is it, I mean, is it energy efficient? Is it time wise efficient? Is it resource efficient? If you can automate one of his small subsystems, also is good enough. We are not looking at developing guns and missile systems and rockets. For that, the ADB, they are there. Why is the regional technology node there? Is getting down to the base level. Let's say, for example, uh, we have to inspect our rifles. If they are dirty, if there's an inspection, they're clean. If you can make something which just passes through the rifle and gives an audit and says Ki, this is the problem with the rifle. There is spitting here, there's corrosion here, there's fouling here, there is deposit of copper suit over here. That's good enough. But the user has to feel the same. It's not just because you want to sell you, you are saying Ki, take it. He has to say, yes sir, this is my problem and this is a good solution. Both of you come together in case you are not able to take the fund, we will fund it. So that's the way to go. Get in touch, problem statements, if not, to the field formation. Start small, establish your credibility, move up ahead the ladder. I think that's the way to go ahead. Yes, sir. Hello. Thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you, sir. Uh, we are an innovative company making healthcare oral care product. Now, concerning with the health segment, with our defense personnel who are in high altitudes like glaciers, Siachen, and uh, Leh Ladakh and all that. So our concern is we have come up with an innovative uh, oral care which will help in uh, getting better practice with the uh, defense personnel. Fine. However, our challenge is rather than procurement, we would like to collaborate and uh, exchange our expertise and technology so that uh, we can make the best use of both of us to reach that. However, since we are not, the awareness about this product is very less, 
we are unable to reach and follow the protocols. Okay. Can you help us with uh, uh, one contact point where we can get into the defense sector with this problem and sure. solve it? Sure, sir. I'll give you steps. Thank you. First of all, write a mail explaining your product to us on the given email ID or contact. Where are you based, sir, if I may ask you, sir? Hyderabad? Hyderabad, sir. Please get in touch with 54 Div, uh, Colonel GSSD. Uh, he is Colonel uh, M.K. Tiwari is the officer there or write a mail to us giving out description of your project. Once we get a project, we find that there is, there is substance, there is substance in all projects and proposals. We will forward to the medical branch. Yes. We will give it to the best of the super specialist who is in the oral care. Yes. We will refer it to him. In case he finds he studies, he says, sir, we already have something like this, then we need not go in for this. In case he says it's good, then we will call you over. Yeah. We will, we, will, we will actually make that meeting happen for you on ground Thank you, sir. Uh, with the super specialist sitting out over there with all the top brass also sitting and attending your presentation. If there is anything which we can take forward, we will be happy to take forward. Thank you, sir. And Thanks. if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Just plain. Yeah. But there is a way now. You know yes. what to do. Exactly. Just write a mail. Get in touch with them or write a mail to us. Sure. We will refer it to the super specialist. Let them take a call. Uh, again, I said... We cannot say, ki, okay, these are the dentures, so give five per battalion to everyone and there are 800 battalions, so eight into three. We can't do that. And Let the user or the super specialist understand and say, yes, this is good. Let him buy that bait, buy that worm and it's, uh, it's on. Then we can take it whatever way we want. There will be n number of ways to take it. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, sir. Sure, sir. And especially it is focusing on... Uh, Plastic free, environmental friendly. Perfect. So we have we've a got people, on that. We've got people who are giving heart implants, who are giving knee replacement things, silicon, 3D printing. We've got the works every day. We almost on uh, every week, we get three to four scheduled calls and four to five impromptu emergency calls where people just drop in because we have open door policy. It's the only thing that we should be sitting there in office. Otherwise, you almost, if I'm not there, it's no good you come in. We entertain each and every one, give them a patient hearing. Whatever is worth taking forward is 100% taken forward. Yeah. That's an assurance. Thank you so much, sir. You addressed my concerns very nicely. Thank you so much for Thank that. Thank you, sir. I guess we're done. Thank you all. So it was a really nice lecture, sir. Thank you so much. I'm sure all of us would have very much benefited. The MSMEs are really benefited. I will surely take, uh, take advantage of your uh, advice. Thank you, sir. And uh, Mr. Ram Subramaniam of Sodantar Foundation President, he'll be honoring him. Next will be yours, sir.